Hello everybody, welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. Subscribe to stay up to date with the channel, which is updated daily. In this film I'm going to finish off some thoughts on wheel balancing. I labelled the first film part 1 because I knew there'd be a lot of caveats. This film assumes knowledge from part 1, so if you haven't watched it, please have a look for it on the channel. In general, this YouTube channel is controversial when it challenges established ways, and wheel balancing is one of those controversies. But it's mainly controversial for those that don't actually watch or listen to what is said. It is also important to understand that not all of my films are suitable for all pilots and students, and some content is for experienced pilots who will be able to put things into the correct context. With all that said, I don't agree with what seems to be an increasing trend with some where they try and make one size fit all. To me, it's unthinking, and I can give you a great example of that here. This is an extract of the Cavalon 915 POH, and it gives clear instruction that if you pre-rotate to higher rotor RPMs, then with the stick fully aft on commencing the ground run, excess drag will compromise acceleration. In this next clip, we'll see a pilot do exactly what he's being cautioned against. Why? Because he's been conditioned in this one-size-fits-all method. 120, the stick forward and straight. Feeling smooth. All gauges are nominal. Through 200, that's enough for us to fly, but we're going to go for a little bit more of a performance takeoff here. 260, 270, 280, 90. One release pre rotator titter, two stick full F3. Release wheel brakes for power initial. Nose is pop, I'm going to go for full power. That right wheel's going to leave the ground last, and up we go. So he says he's going to pre rotate to 290 for a performance takeoff, then reverts to bring in the stick fully aft during his takeoff roll. Whilst verbalizing that powers at initial will mean a performance takeoff can be anything he wants it to mean, but it certainly isn't going to achieve the POH takeoff distances. Again, this isn't to beat up on the pilot, but it absolutely demonstrates the issues real pilots have, and it is the reasons I keep banging the drum. Okay, back to wheel balancing. The overall point being made in part one was that this technique has its roots in students and single seaters, where it is of clear benefit to build the takeoff process very slowly for obvious reasons. However, clearly there are other considerations beyond pilot training and beyond single seaters. Our East Coast Cavalon pilot giving one of them. My focus has been on performance and it shouldn't be ignored because very many have ended their day in the airfield boundary hedge or just beyond it. Until you are competent at achieving the nose attitude you want and can confidently get to full power quickly, you should not give yourself challenging takeoff distances because not only will time spent in the wheel balance consume a lot of runway, but many modern gyroplane models have crank keels which allows over rotation and even more drag that extends takeoff distances further or promotes the old issue of trying to climb out behind the drag curve. 